You know, the amazing thing that is when Jesus shed his blood on the cross, there was a provision to forgive us for all of our sins. Sometime you need a verse with the word all in it. <laughs> Colossians 2.13 is one such verse. It uses the word all. Um, I also like the word picture you find in Ezekiel 36, 25, when he's talking about forgiveness. He says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idolatry. God says, I don't care how filthy or how idolatrous it is. I want you to know my cleansing. I've told people sometimes to stare at that verse, like I have, to make sure that you understand it. John Wesley used to tell us, man, don't go out to preach until you know your sins are forgiven. You see, um, God wants you to know your need that is total, that I've broken his law, but he also wants you to know Jesus' perfect provision and not try to what? Look to anything other than him. He said it is finished. That's a Greek word that really means paid in full. You know, a, um, uh, God wants to bless you and bless me with a, with a clear conscience before him. Um, the story is of a young mother and father that bought their first piece of new furniture. Well, it was, um, it was a sofa. In fact, they had to trade in an old car to be able to afford it. He traded in my old Volkswagen Super Beetle for our first piece of new furniture, a mauve sofa. He says, it was roughly the shape of Pepto-Bismol, but because it represented to us a substantial investment, we thought mauve sounded better. The man at the furniture store warned us not to get it when he found out we had small children. You don't want a mauve sofa, he advised. Get something the color of dirt. But we had the naive, but we had the naive optimism of young parenthood. We know how to handle our children. Give us the mauve sofa. From that moment on, we all knew that clearly the number one rule in the house, don't sit on the mob sofa, don't touch the mob sofa, don't play around the mob sofa, don't eat on, breathe on, look at or think about the mob sofa. Remember the forbidden tree in the Garden of Eden? On every other chair in the house you may freely sit, but upon this sofa, this mob sofa, you may not sit, for the day you fall you shall surely die. Well, then came the fall. One day there appeared on the mob sofa a stain, a red stain, a red jelly stain. So my wife, who had chosen the moth sofa and adored it, lined up our three children in front of it. Laura, age four, Mallory, two and a half, and Johnny, six months. Do you see that, children? That's a stain, a red stain, a red jelly stain. The man at the sofa store says it's not coming out, not forever. Do you know how long forever is, children? That's how long we're going to stand here until one of you tells me who put the stain on the moth sofa. Mallory was the first to break. With trembling lips and tear-filled eyes, this is a two-and-a-half-year-old, Laura did it, blaming her older sister. Laura passionately denied it. Then there was silence for the longest time. No one said a word. I knew the children wouldn't, for they'd never seen their mother so upset. I knew they wouldn't because they knew if they did, they'd spend eternity in the timeout chair. I knew they wouldn't because I was the one who put the red jelly stain on the mob sofa. And I knew I wasn't saying anything. I figured I would find a f safe place to confess such as in a book I was going to write, maybe. <laughs> well, I want you to come clean before God. I, God wants to bless you with a clear conscience. I remember it was after I, right after I graduated from college, and I was exposed just to the concept of living before God with a clear conscience. I had professed Christ, and I knew Him, but I knew nothing of really how to, how to really uh, make past things right, um, you know, that, that clear conscience, it was defined something like having uh, a spirit of, of having freedom in your spirit so that you, no one can come up to you and legitimately accuse you of any wrong toward them that you have not sought to make right with God and others. So I remember God illuminating me to a lot of things that, that needed to be made right. Yeah, a person could come up to me and, and say, well, I, you know, I have, that was a, uh, a lack of integrity in that situation. That was something I shouldn't have done. Uh, that was dishonest. And God dealt with me. I appreciated the insight I received was to deal with the hardest thing first. Because sometimes when you're resisting something in your spirit, other little things can be magnified and you sort of start chasing things down that God may not really be of God, may be example of that adversary's accusation, may be example of that false guilt. 
Well, you know, it's not that I even remember everything that I've done wrong, and you won't either. And it's not that God will maybe raise everything in your life, but you just say, God, I'm open to you. I'm not hiding anything. Would you show me anything you want me to do to make right with you and right with others? Certainly if it's something that no one else has ever been aware of or whatever in regard to, you know, maybe uh, don't create a battle that what would make, make things worse than better. But God is with you. Maybe sometimes a, a wise, mature person can help you. Uh, God will honor a heart that wants to be right with him. God wants to bless you with that clear conscience. He doesn't want you driven by guilt. He doesn't want you uh, feeling like you have to spend the rest of your life making up for something. Think of the Apostle Paul. He had to wake up every day knowing he'd kill Christians. Um, he could have said, Lord, I'm just going to sit in the corner the rest of my life and apologize for being there. He didn't do that. He would said, Lord, I'm the foremost of sinners, and I know that, but I am what I am by the grace of God. Um, when God told, you know, uh, used Paul to help Onesimus, Onesimus had stolen and from his master, run away, he sent him back. But God went with him. Uh, God went with him. Even Paul uh, prepared the way for him. And he says, look, if he owes you anything, charge it to my account, Paul says. God is with you. God is for you. Now, that's what I want you to see. God is for you in helping you make things right. God wants to bless you with a clear conscience. If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, that's probably one of the most genuine workings of God that a person will observe when they see a person humbling themselves and trying to make things right. You know, human nature doesn't want to humble himself. Human nature is like my, is proud. I remember an individual, I was sharing one of these things, some of these truths one day, and a person, he told a story, of a true story, of an individual who had been fired from his job, and he was packing up his desk, and he was sort of frustrated and mad. And, and uh, as he was packing his desk, he just was putting, well, he put the company stapler in there. He threw that in there, too, and he, I guess he stole the company stapler. Well, as he got home and uh, over the months ahead, he'd see that stapler every day that he'd stolen. God's spirit sort of seemed to make an issue of that. And so, finally, he called his former boss and said, would it be okay if I come in? His boss said, and just talk to you. He said, oh, sure, I'd like to catch up with you. And Well, when he came in to talk to his boss, his boss said, uh, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you just to see how things are going. Well, he says, I wanted to talk to you because I just want to apologize for just the way I left. I, I was frustrated, and I didn't communicate a very nice spirit, and uh, I want to never really thanked you for the opportunities I had the years I was here to have this job. Also, I came because I stole the company stapler and I handed that to him. You know, the boss said this to him. He said, you know, I've, I've been around the gospel a lot of times, but I've never seen it lived out like this. Wow, I'd, I'd like to maybe talk to you more about it. Well, uh, you let God, you just focus on you getting right God will focus on what? The opportunities that may, that may lead to. Let's pray for all those, if we all could join together in each of our life, that everyone listening, would, God would show them anything between them and a clear conscience before God. That you could have that freedom in your spirit. That you don't, not worried about being found out. Uh, there's a freedom that what? That you know the blood of Jesus is what? Covering everything in your life. So Father, would you answer the questions on each heart? And would you bless, in the name of Jesus, uh, Christians all throughout our land, all those listening, and even beyond the ones that these will touch, would you bless them with that joy of a clear conscience? In Jesus' name, amen.